countdown for blastoff, X minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, X minus 1, fire! From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company presents X minus one. Tonight, X minus one presents Pirigi's Wonderful Dolls by George Lefferts. The doll shop stood on a quiet Washington side street, not too far from the sprawling Pentagon building. A woman and child waited outside. The little girl peering eagerly through the window at the dolls inside and the woman glancing impatiently at her wristwatch, as if expecting someone who was late for an appointment. There was nothing about the doll shop to warn them, but they were waiting to keep an appointment with doom. Mommy, look! Hmm? What, dear? In the window of the shop, the tiny dolls... Oh, Mommy, do you think Daddy will buy me one? We'll ask him when he comes, dear. Should be here soon. He said 3 o'clock on this corner. I see him, Mommy. See? Oh, Henry, over here. Hello, dear. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, we're all ready to go shopping. Cindy's been... Yes, well, I'm afraid we'll have to call off the shopping, Ellen. Oh, Henry, we promised Cindy. Well, I'm sorry, but it's just one of those things. You've been the wife of an army colonel long enough to know his life isn't his own. What is it this time? Well, some more of that flying sphere nonsense. The pilot who says he sighted it last month crashed and was killed today, and the general wants a full report. Oh, dear. What next? Well, I got a staff meeting at the Pentagon at 3.15. Daddy, look in this yes, window. Well, I haven't time, dear. Alma, I... Yes. Just for a minute, Daddy, yes. please. Now, Cindy, I haven't time to stop and watch a bunch of six-inch dolls parading around in a shop window. <laughs> <laughs> Say, they are lifelike, aren't they? Look at that, Alma. Dolls are marching around like a regular review. They've even got their own little band. <laughs> See the one in the red jacket, Daddy? Yeah. He's the leader. He's bowing to us. Well, uh, if they don't look human. Henry, your staff meeting. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Well, I got to run. Can we buy one, Daddy? Well, not now, dear, and I'll run along. Now, don't go spending a lot of money on that nonsense. No, now. dear. Bye. Bye, Cindy. Bye, Bye, Daddy. Oh, look, Mommy, the band is going to play. Aren't they wonderful, honey? Honey, I must have stood on this corner a thousand times. I've never noticed this shop before. Look at the man inside, Mommy. Who's he? That's the proprietor, dear. Doesn't he look funny with those, those red cheeks and white mustache? It's easy to see who he models his dolls after. I mean, look, he's coming to the door. He's coming. Good evening, children. Uh, uh, good evening. How funny he talks. Hush, Cindy. Would you like to step inside the shop of Santo Pirigi? Well, yes, we would. But... This way. Mommy, it's like... like fairyland. Here in the shop of Santo Pirigi, creator of Pirigi's universal, wonderful dolls, the world of adult reality is blended with the world of child's fantasy. This is a new shop, isn't it, Mr. Pirigi? What is new and what is old? Come, this way. Would you like to meet one of my little ones? Oh, yes. Now, this one in the red jacket is Toto. He is the leader. <coughs> Handle him ever so gently. See, I will set him on the table. Speak, little one. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? <gasps> Oh, Mommy, he talks, the doll talks. Oh, amazing, absolutely amazing. That is nothing for Pirigi's wonderful dolls. Listen, sing. Sing, Toto. Sing for the little girl. My name is Toto. <laughs> oh. Sing, Toto. Men are big and tall. Dolls are very small. When men begin to fall... The dolls will rule them more. <laughs> oh, more, more! Uh, how do they work, Mr. Parisi? How do they work? Ah, that's...
That is the secret of the great Pirigi, greatest of all doll makers. To make an ordinary doll is nothing. To make a perfect replica, that is something. But to make a doll with intelligence, that is the work of an artist, eh? I suppose that they're very expensive to buy. But Pirigi does not sell his dolls, madam. You don't sell them? When I construct a doll like Toto, I cannot bear to be permanently separated from him. So instead of selling, I rent my little people. You do? You rent dolls? Precisely. Ten dollars. For how long? For as long as they are cherished. My only request is that when you grow tired of my dolls, you return them to me in good condition. Oh, Mommy, could we take him home? Take him home! Take him home! Take him home! <laughs> Father said that we shouldn't spend a lot oh, of money. Oh, please, I'll take such good care of it. Please. Well, honey, we'll have to deal with your father later, but... Well... Oh, Mommy. All right, wrap him up, Mr. Parigi. But I have a feeling that when your father comes home, we'll be sorry. Be sorry, be sorry, be sorry, be sorry. <laughs> Toto, this is my room, and you're going to sleep right here next to my pillow. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't laugh like that. I'm going to have to teach you some manners. <laughs> and you'll be quiet because my daddy will be home soon. And he's a colonel in the Air Force staff, and he'll bust you to private if you don't behave. Come along now, I'm going to introduce you to my puppy dog, Mr. Blister, so be good. Here, Mr. Blister. Here, Blister. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Blister, this is Toto. Oh, dear, I don't think Mr. Blister likes you, Toto. Come over here and shake hands with Toto, Mr. Blister. Come on now. Honey, dolls don't get frightened. But he was frightened, Mommy. He screamed. You imagined it, dear. It's only a doll. He did. He did. Well, Mr. Blister didn't mean it. Now, you know he's the gentlest little pup alive. He is, and he's nasty, and I hate him. Oh, <laughs> now, see, you've hurt his feelings. I don't care. He tried to buy my new doll, and I don't ever want to see him again, ever. Oh, dear. All right, Mr. Blister, you come downstairs with me. Cindy's angry with you tonight. I'll kill him. Cindy, where did you learn a thing like that? I... Toto said it. Honey, you've had a, a very exciting day. Now, brush your teeth now and go to bed, hmm? Daddy's coming home late, so he'll see you in the morning. Good night, dear. Sleep well. I hate him. <laughs> hate him. Hate him. Ready? In a minute, dear. Mm. How was the staff meeting last oh, night? Horrible bore, as usual. I don't know what's got into the old man. Just because a few farmers corroborated the pilot's report, he thinks some strange aircraft has penetrated our radar zone. <laughs> well, where's the little one? Up in her room. <laughs> now, that's funny. She's usually down here before me. Well, she's probably up to something. Sit down, dear. Mm. Say, remind me to take some papers back to the war department, will you? I left them in my strong box. You haven't been bringing your reports home, have you? Well, it's safe enough. Well, you told me it was against regulations to bring secret papers home. Well, I had to finish some work for the old man, and nobody will ever know the difference. Well, I don't know. Oh, would you feed the puppy before we sit down, Henry? Mm, yes. His bowl's under the sink. Where is he? Say, that's funny. Uh, here's his supper from last night, only half eaten. <laughs> He's getting fussy. Doesn't like canned dog food anymore. Oh. Here, Blister! Here, Blister, Blister, Blister! I wonder where the Dickens is that mutt. Maybe he's on the back porch. Here, Blister. Hey. Alma. What is it, dear? Alma, look. <gasps> Henry, is he... He's dead. But how? But what the looks of it, he, he might have been poisoned. But who would do a thing like that to an innocent little puppy? I don't know. Let me see his dish. Look at that. 
I don't understand this at all. Not at all. What, dear? What is it? There are pieces of broken glass in this food. Blue glass, you see? How? Henry. What? I just remembered something. What? It may be coincidence, but in the bathroom this morning... Well, what about the bathroom? Oh, Cindy's blue glass, the one with the Mickey Mouse on it, was broken. I found pieces in the wastebasket. I meant to ask her about oh, it. Alma, for heaven's sake, you aren't suggesting that our little girl... Well, she loved Blister more than anyone. Not last night, she didn't. Why not? He went after Toto. Now, who is Toto? That's her new doll. Her what? Honey, I was meaning to tell you. Well, you you bought her one of those dolls. I, huh? I just rented it. Well, rented it. Now, look here, Alma. You know we haven't got the kind of money to throw away. Well, she I'm... had her heart set on it, dear. I used my dividend. <sighs> All right. But what happened with Blister? Well, he went for the doll, and, and Cindy said she hated him. Oh, well, a child... She is... said she'd kill him. Where'd she get a thought like that? I don't know. Has she been watching those chillers on television? I don't know. Well, it's too ridiculous. Good heavens, a nine-year-old child putting ground glass in dog food, she'd have to be a monster. Mommy! She's coming. Mm, well, don't say anything. I'll talk to her. Morning, dear. Morning, Mommy. Morning, Daddy. What's the matter? Uh... Sit down, dear. Yes, sir. Now, your mother tells me you broke your blue drinking glass. Oh, no, I didn't break it. Cindy. I didn't. Well, now, somebody broke it. It wasn't your mother and it wasn't me. Then it must have been Toto. Cynthia. Cindy, you know Toto is only a doll. Now, a doll couldn't have broken your glass, could he? Well? I guess not. So we can't very well blame it on a doll, then, can we? But he must have done it, Daddy. Cindy, you know how Daddy feels about little girls who tell fibs. Now, did you break your glass and maybe accidentally get some pieces into Mr. Blister's dish to sort of punish him for biting your doll? No, Daddy. Well, I'd hate to think you'd done something you knew was wrong and you were blaming it on a doll. Is something wrong with Mr. Blister? Is he sick? Worse than that. Henry. And the child has to face reality, Alma. What's the matter with Mr. Blister? He's dead, Cindy. Oh, no. He can't be dead. He isn't dead, Daddy. No, he isn't. He isn't. Mommy. Honey, he is dead, Cindy. But he'll come back. He has to come back. No, darling, he won't come back. Ever? Not ever. Yes. Uh, now that we've told you, Cindy... You want to change your mind about the glass? Henry, leave her alone, please. <laughs> you think I killed him? Now look what you've done. The child feels guilty <laughs> enough, My, my Henry. dear, this is no time for feelings to interfere. You go up to her room, honey. Daddy and I'll be up in a minute. I don't want to. Please, Cindy. Now we'll be right up, please. There. That's a good girl. Close the kitchen door behind you. Mr. Blister's dead. He isn't coming back. Ever. Ever. Daddy thinks it was me, but... It was you. It was you! your supper, dear. I'm not hungry. You scarcely touched your lunch. I don't feel like eating. Is it Mr. Blister? <laughs> now answer your mother. She'll work it out her own way, Henry. Well, I don't know, Elma. When I was a boy, there was such a thing as discipline. Now, the way this child is being brought up... Henry! Well, it's true. There's no respect, lying and... <laughs> oh, there, there, honey. Now, your father's upset. He doesn't mean well, it. what's happened to us? We were a nice, peaceful, happy family until you bought that cursed doll. Now who's blaming things on the doll? Well, it's true. It's... Oh, now I've spilled my coffee. I'll get you another cup. Never mind. I'm late now. I better be going. Oh, you uh, wanted to get some papers from the strong box. Oh, yes. Cindy, please, try to eat something. Yes, ma'am. Alma! Alma! What is it? Alma! It's gone! What's gone? The box, the strong box is gone! It can't be! The door to your study is always locked. You and I, I have the only keys. Yeah, I know all that, and I tell you it isn't there. Well, who would go? I don't know. Alma, those confidential reports, if they ever got into the wrong place. I warned you about keeping them what, there. What if it ever came out in the open? 
Can't you see the papers? Call the police, Henry. And throw my army career in a wastebasket after 17 years? No. We've got to find it ourselves. But it was there when I went in to clean this morning. What about your key? It's right here. I always keep it with me. It's funny. Oh, no. My other keys are on the ring. Oh, you've lost it. I don't see how. Alma, Alma, how could you do Oh, Henry, please. We'll search the house. I can't think of anything else to do. Well, you'll miss the staff meeting. Meeting? My whole career goes up in smoke if we don't find those reports. Somebody got hold of your key and opened that room and... I know. Cindy. You leave the child alone. She's been through enough. You know she wouldn't do a thing like that. I don't know anything anymore. I don't even know my own child. I don't even know you. All I know is that Strongbox has gone and it contains papers that are dynamite if the wrong person gets them. The question being who? <laughs> What's that? It's coming from upstairs. It must be Cindy's doll. Oh, that blasted doll again. <laughs> Something must have set it off. I don't know how the, the mechanism well, works. For heaven's sakes, let's go up and shut it off. Since you Henry, what? Look, where what? Around the doll's neck, the key, the key to your study. You see, Alma, it was Cindy after I all. I don't believe well, it. Well, good heavens, do you have to have it spelled out for you? Here's our doll with a key around its she neck. She wouldn't, Henry. You know she wouldn't. Oh, ever since you got this uh, this fool doll, she's been acting half insane. At first the dog, and now this. I think she hates herself. Henry, more. Cindy is my child. I know her. I know she's a good, sensitive person with no malice uh, in you're her. You're simply refusing to face the facts, my dear. What are you going to do? I'm going downstairs and have a talk with that young lady. You're not telling the truth, Cindy. I am. I am. Cindy, now you know that strong box is very important to me. Now, I can understand that you might have been angry at me because I scolded you. And so you took it and hid it, just to spite me. Now, all I ask is for you to tell me the truth. Now, where is it? I didn't take it, Daddy. Honest, I didn't take it. (sighs) Well, I suppose you're going to tell me now that a little six-inch doll took it and hid it. Well... I'm speaking to you, young lady. But I didn't take it, Daddy. You don't understand. Toto did it. He's terrible, awful. He says things. He's going to kill everybody. Cindy, you're inventing things. It's true. At night when I'm sleeping, he stands next to my pillow and whispers things to me. Awful things. He told me he'd kill me, too, if I scold, if I told you. I think this child is sick. I think she needs a doctor. She's frightened, Henry. She's trembling like a leaf. Come on, dear. We'll go up to your room. I don't want to go up there. Honey, Mommy will stay with you. I'm afraid he's up there. Who? Toto! Well, he won't be up there for long. Mr. Toto is going right back to Pierigi's wonderful doll shop before I lose my sanity, which means right now. Welcome to the home of Pirigi's wonderful doll. Are you Pirigi? Santor Pirigi, creator of the universal doll, the doll with the mind, the doll which... I'm returning one of your masterpieces. Oh? If you will step into the rear of my shop. Now the complaint. No complaint. Here's your doll. Good riddance. My little Toto. Rejected. You found the world of men too filled with hate. Hate, 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 hate! We will change all that later on. Return to your comrades in the window, little one. And now, Colonel Grayson. I think we have no further business. Ah, but we do, Colonel. Let me see. Ah, yes, here it is. Do you recognize this strong box, Colonel? My strong box? Well, where? My little Toto is very clever, sir. Are you trying to tell me your doll stole that from me? Let us not say stole. I am merely keeping it in custody. What's the game, Pierigi? The game, as you call it, is blackmail. You give me what I want, and I do not ruin your career. 
What do you want? Information. We already know something from the reports of the War Department concerning a certain strange-looking sphere reported by one of your pilots. What government do you represent? I represent Pierigi's wonderful dolls, none other. <laughs> I am not so naive, sir. Perhaps I should explain. Each man hides something from the world. Each man loves something more than life. With the help of my wonderful dolls, I obtain personal information which enables me to control the men who control the world. You're a madman. A genius. You would be surprised at the list of men who have become the confidants for my dolls. Do you think you can blackmail me into betraying my country? If the price is right. And in this case, sir, the price is your career and the lives of your wife and child. Why are you so interested in the flying spirit? Let us say for reasons of my own. Well, Colonel? Hand over the strong box. I warn you, I have a gun. Give it to me. You are being foolish. Put down that walking stick. Now? No closer. Now? Hello? Give me the police. Hello? Yes, this is Colonel Henry Grayson. I've, uh, I've just killed a man. Yes, Perigi's doll shop, corner of 4th and Lexington. The body is in the back room. Yes, I'll wait for you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, you little fiend. Colonel Grayson. Did, did I hear it speak? Colonel Henry Grayson. I must be going out of my mind, a six-inch doll. <laughs> Shut up! Your master's dead. You are mistaken, Colonel. I, Toto, am the master. What do you mean? If you will examine the body of Santor Perigi, you will see that he does not bleed. And he does not bleed, Colonel, because Santor Perigi never lived. Never lived? Santor Perigi is a doll. A doll? But that's impossible. He's a man. He talks. He walks. The and... people of Meritrix are skillful doll builders. People of Meritrix? Doll but Look, who are you? I am Xanthus Imperator, commander of the legions of the third planetoid, Meritrix. Uh, legions? Planetoid? I... My people and I, whom you regard as dolls... Come from a tiny planet beyond the moon, so small that it cannot support our population. We landed one of our space spheres on Earth three months ago with the intention of colonizing. Unfortunately, one of your pilots intercepted us. So that's why you wanted our information. Precisely. Are you, uh, are you, uh, human? Oh, quite human. Uh, of course. In order to deal with Earth people without suspicion, we were forced to construct Perigi, a man-sized doll. Oh, well, I can't believe this. I'm having hallucinations. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, that would be impossible. We have weapons of destruction quite unknown to Earth people. Well, I phoned the police and they'll be here soon. By the time they arrive, my people will have prepared something quite shocking. <laughs> Cover him, Ryan. Okay, Sarge. You the guy who turned in the call? Yes. Where's the body? Well, it isn't exactly a body. What do you mean? It's a doll. A what? Well, you've got to let me explain. Now, this sounds fantastic, but I've stumbled onto an unbelievable plot to control the world. Keep talking. Now, these little dolls, they aren't really dolls. They're tiny people. There's a big doll named Santo Perigi, and he runs this shop. Holy smokes. He's off his trolley, sir. Listen, mister, we got a call that there was a murder here. Now, if there was one, where's the body? Behind those curtains in the back. Only, it isn't really a body, you see. What? I hear something back there, Sarge. All right, cover those curtains. Yo! Is anyone back there? Come on out. Come out or we'll come in and get you. Something's coming. The curtain's opening. Welcome, gentlemen. Perigi. 
Well, this is impossible. I smashed his skull. I... You know this guy? Yes, that, that's the one. That's the doll. What's your name, mister? Pirigi. Santo Pirigi, creator of the Universal Doll. You ever see this man? Never until just now. What? Well, he's lying. I tell you, he's nothing but a life-size doll. The real masters are these little dolls. Ryan, are you getting this? He's wacko, Sarge. Nutty as a fruitcake. Look, look, I'm not crazy, I tell you. I can prove it. They, they must have fixed up his head when I when I smashed it in. T- touch him, you'll see. Mr. Pareggi, you know what the guy is talking about? The man is demented, obviously. No, no, look, I tell you, there's a there's a plot to control the Earth. Listen, you, you've got to let me call the War Department. They'll want to know about the flying sphere. Holy mackerel, this gets worse every minute. Ryan. Take him to headquarters? Save some time. Take him down to the psycho ward. Okay, Buck Rogers. Now, look, I'm along nice look, look, and quiet look, you've got to listen to me. Don't you see the future of mankind is at stake? Sure, sure. I know how it is. Look, he's nothing but a man-sized doll. Touch him. And the little ones are going to take over the earth. I know. I had the DTs once. Okay, Sarge. Oh, we'll see you later. Please, please. Come along. Please, now. listen Come to on. me. You've got to listen to me. Sorry to cause all this trouble, Mr. Parigi. Not at all, sir. Not at all. Well, I'll be. <laughs> that ain't the cutest little doll. Say, my little girl will be nuts for that. So perhaps you will accept it as a gift. Well, now. For saving I... my life. That madman might have killed me. No home is really complete without one of Pirici's wonderful dolls, Sergeant. Is that right, Toto? <laughs> yes, but I. I, I, I would like, in some way, to show my gratitude. You will be doing me a favor if you will take the doll home to your little daughter. <laughs> Say, this ought to make her the happiest girl in the world. Yes, Toto will come <laughs> as a great surprise. A very great surprise. Won't it, Toto? <laughs> Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Pirigi's Wonderful Dolls, written by George Lefferts. Heard in the cast were Janet Alexander as Cindy, Anne Petoniak as Alma, Nelson Olmsted as Henry, Joe DeSantis as Pirigi, Michael O'Day as Toto, Ken Lynch as the Sergeant, and Frank Milano as Ryan. This is Fred Collins speaking. X-1 was directed by Fred Way and is an NBC Radio Network production. Tonight's story concludes the present series of stories of the world of the future. If you'd like to hear X-1 return to the air at some later date, please drop us a postcard or letter addressed to X-1, care of the National Broadcasting Company, RCA Building, New York. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.